It will be the shortest journey she's ever made. Good morning, sir. Welcome back. Oh, hi. Boop. And I'll get your temperature. I've okay. had my shots. It's like I never left. Glad to be here. I am so excited. We've been a long time coming back, and we're anxious to welcome the public back as well. Oh, looking forward to it. This is a big step for us. As crews scramble on deck, the tugs move into position. What we do on a tow like this is what we call lash them up. They're tied up alongside. The line's readied, gangplanks raised. Are we in position? Radios bark orders. The Jeremiah O'Brien pulls away from the dock on a new mission. It's a voyage that's nothing short of a miracle. <laughs> This veteran is one of the last working ships that was part of the D-Day landings in Normandy. Liberty ships were built to last just a few years, if the storms, the Nazi subs, and the icebergs didn't get them on their first voyage. Somehow, she beat the odds. Along with the John Brown in Baltimore, this floating museum is one of the last two liberties still able to go to sea. And the longer the ship remains operational, the more unique and more impactful it will be in telling the American story during World War II. But the pandemic halted all funding. Visitors were chased away. Repairs impossible to be made on this old ship that runs on just steam. It was really sad. Generations of men and women, thousands of volunteers had saved her from the scrappers. But was this really the end of the line? Then, this thing's really taking off. the fire hit. Flames tore through a storage shed at Pier 45 at San Francisco's Fisherman's Wharf. USS Jeremiah is in danger. Right next to the O'Brien, tied up, no chance to pull away, she was a sitting duck. Flame links lapping over the Jeremiah O'Brien, going over the mast. Two unaccounted people and the Jeremiah O'Brien. I woke up suddenly at 4 o'clock. I heard breaking glass. You could hear the inferno. You could see the orange glow and the roar, you know, the fire. And it was just terrifying, really. So I just yelled, everybody up, fire, fire, everybody up. And so the guys uh, got the gangway down, thank goodness. And then we just got off. I couldn't stop crying. It was one of those things like losing a good, good friend. The pilot gets it ready, we get all our gear on, and we get underway. The fireboat St. Francis raced to the scene, rounded a turn, and the crew, hardened firefighters that had seen it all, was just stunned. Get around the turn right there, we see an amazing amount of flames coming off that boat. She was right back in the war. Like a war movie. Flames were just rolling up above it. How does all kind of just went, oh, this one's gonna be a big one. We just kinda took a deep breath and looked at each other and knew what our job was gonna be. More than 100 men and women fought the fire all night on the pier and on the water. All right, Jack, here we go, buddy. And our job was just to make sure that Brian wasn't gonna burn. Chief Vic Wersch and Lieutenant Sean Bonetti of the St. Francis knew damn well on this one, history was on the line. I've known about the O'Brien since I was a kid. See the flames right here. And this is us just pulling up flames jumping 25 feet. Put a bunch of water on the building right here. We took all the flames out and we put a bunch of water on the bow of the Jeremiah O'Brien as well so she wouldn't catch fire. Fearing damage under the pier, they quickly launched a skiff. This is us when we launched. St. Francis is back there. We just came off of it. We're moving to the other side now. The view from below, well, it was the stuff that fuels nightmares. Underneath, it was normal, and on top, it was like hell. Snuck in there, took our flashlights, really concerned about pure impingement onto the supports. But in the dark, the St. Francis poured millions of gallons of seawater on the pier and the O'Brien. And other fireboats and ground crews refused to give up. By mid-morning, the flames were finally knocked down. The smoke drifting away, the pier damaged, the O'Brien wounded. But a closer look confirmed it. 
the men and women of the San Francisco Fire Department had saved this piece of American history. Give a shout out and a thanks to the San Francisco Fire Department once again for the amazing job they did. But Pier 45 was a mess. The O'Brien was damaged and moved to another pier, unable to take visitors. And the nagging questions, would she ever be able to return to her home pier? Would she ever really sail again? So 10 months later, she's finally on the move. Urgency and optimism twist together up on the deck. As the tugs do their dance, pushing, pulling, and prodding the O'Brien along the San Francisco skyline, once again, there is hope in the air. Always a little nervous before we move the ship, but I'm excited, it's about time. Suddenly, on the bay, an old friend appears. The fireboat St. Francis pulls alongside. This time, the monitors spray streams of water as a salute one ship to another. I don't think you could ask for a better place to be on the planet. Two friends reunited. It's kind of our neighborhood, so we're going home. And just like that, the O'Brien is back at Pier 45. It's been a long time, it's been a very sad long year, and we're so happy to have it back. Here she will do what she does best, the steam the pistons, the whistle, the bagpipes. The crowds, young and old, they will bring life back to a legend. The O'Brien has come home to tell the story of the war and all those young men and women who fought for freedom nearly a century ago. They are saving the history that must never be forgotten. We've got heavy fire on the back of the pier. The USS Jeremiah is in danger. I want the fireboat, fireboat three, to go to the bow of the Jeremiah O'Brien. Let's see if all units fireboat three is going to be operating from the sea. Two unaccounted people in the Jeremiah O'Brien. You guys, you got explosions going on down here at the end of the pier. 